friends if you were watching yesterday's video you know that a couple of things broke on the old yerf dog here first off our light went out then we started losing power and gaining it back and losing it i suspect that is a dirt problem once again because my buddy ahead of me was dusting us pretty good so um that's an easy problem to fix not fun at least i don't have fun fixing it but easy i gotta take apart the air filter assembly here and um, clean out the air filter, take the carburetor out and drown it in carburetor cleaner or gasoline or whatever. So um, that's an easy problem to fix. The light, as before mentioned, it's because the ground wire here broke. So I'm gonna have to extend this wire. I'm probably gonna run it along the back side of the frame here and make sure there's plenty of slack right here and just loop it over that and uh, attach it to this and then eventually to the battery here where it's supposed to be connected. So that's why we were getting the Blair Witch Project uh, strobe light, you know, Daft Punk light show there. And the last problem is the one that disturbs me the most. This engine's been hopping up and down quite a bit now. And I suspect it's probably due to the fact that when I went to the smaller sprocket here, I didn't get the right chain. And that's because things are a bit screwy right now in the world, and I just don't feel like throwing a mask on and sitting in a shop and getting glared at just for being there, and I really don't want to deal with it right now. And when you order stuff online, if you're not exactly sure what you're ordering, which I'm not, I, I'm no expert on T whatever, you know, chains, you know what I mean? So, even though I've looked this go-kart up and I thought I knew what I was buying, I've bought several things, like I bought a different sprocket for it and, and it ended up being the sprocket for the Chinese scooter, not for the Yerf Dog. So, even though it's meant for this engine, it's not meant for this sprocket set. So, because of that, I've just avoided, you know, doing my due diligence and decided to go like this. And I suspect this slack had a little bit of consequence on the inside of the transmission there. So, um, <laughs> we're gonna have to take apart part of this engine. I might even have to drop it out and figure out what's wrong. But uh, let's make this an edumacation kind of video. Um, I'll explain how CVT transmissions work. I'm not gonna really show taking this apart because anybody can honestly go through this and just unscrew all of these and it comes right off. So you don't really need me to show you how to do that. But I will explain kind of the idea of a CVT setup here. So let's quickly go over the idea of a CVT setup for you guys. I'm going to use a bicycle for an example because it's not much different. On a bicycle you have gears. This is a 21 speed bicycle. There's three gears here and there's seven gears here. Now on a bicycle, when you're starting off, you're not going to start on top gear. Just like with a car, you wouldn't start in fifth gear on a manual transmission. You would not start in fifth gear because your engine would bog and it would struggle to make enough power to get the machine moving at the one-to-one -one ratio or overdrive ratio, you know, depending on the age of the vehicle. Same thing with a bicycle. You wouldn't start in uh, seven and three. You wouldn't do that. I mean, you could do that if you're on top of a hill, I guess, rolling down, you could do that. But it's going to be really hard, really inefficient. So... What we have to do is we have to go below drive and that's what's happening here. We've got this is drive gear and these are two sizes below drive gear. That's final drive gear on this stack and this is six sizes below final drive. So we have a lot of variation, hence why it's called a 21 speed bike. There's 21 different gear ratios you can do here. Now CVT system uses the same idea except for Instead of a chain and gears, it uses what's called a variator and a belt. Now the variator on this side is going to squeeze together. It's a taper. It's two sets of pull or two pulleys squeezing together as this engine is spooling up. And that's going to force the belt to expand outward, just like what's happening here. The chain is expanding outward. That's changing your gear ratio. On the other end, we're going to do the opposite. Instead of squeezing together, we're going to release, which is going to cause the belt to go closer inward, just like how the chain would go closer here. 
So what this is, is it's a variating system. It's automatically changing all the time based on the needs of the engine, based on the amount of forces countering the motor and what the engine's doing. Basically, you have constant power all the time, and anytime it needs to change, it automatically does it based on friction, whatever. Another thing to take note on about CVT setups is that, so with this bike, you have 21 speeds. That's a lot of variation, right? Of gear ratios. Well, with the variator CVT setup, you don't have 21 speeds. You have an infinite range between top and bottom. Right here, you know, I've got seven choices, right? Well, with the variator, I have infinite choices. That variator is going to adjust based on what the engine needs. So you've got choices in between the gears that don't exist here on a bicycle. That's basically why they're going to these systems. It's actually existed for quite some time. It's not really a new thing. It's just that they're kind of making a comeback. I think uh, snowmobiles actually had a similar setup, if I'm not mistaken, some snowmobiles. But yeah, that's basically why they're going to these uh, variator setups. They're just so simple and pretty cheap to do. All right, so that's really not all that dirty. I mean, there's a little bit. There's a little bit in the initial area, but behind where the air filter was and the filter itself, it's looking okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of dirt, I guess. I'll go ahead and slosh that out with some carburetor cleaner. But uh, past the air filter and the inlet tube here, it's pretty clean. Only a teeny bit of dust. It's really not enough to cause what we were experiencing so hopefully um hopefully i didn't do any major damage to the engine itself i'm just going to shoot a little bit of carburetor cleaner down there and uh we'll call that good so as you can see here here's the air filter cover our little vacuum hose idea is actually kind of working because before this thing would be about five or six times as caked in half the time so i mean this this is definitely working and you can see why i had to do it they have the inlet port aimed at the ground. This marries up like that. Yeah, that's how it came. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out what's going to happen there. You've got a vent cover aimed at the ground right next to these big knobby tires and those up front. So the cart would just stir up so much dust on its own that you'd be vacuuming up all of it into your carburetor in no time. And this air filter wasn't doing a good enough job to hold it all back so we're gonna go ahead and clean that up and uh, yeah I, I do like this idea I recommend this modification if you guys are running the stock GY6 go ahead and figure out a way to keep the airflow from collecting down here figure out a way to get it up high all right, so we went ahead and got that cleaned up and uh, I'm gonna let it air out a little bit and take the air duster and finish it off Went ahead and swabbed the inside here, just kind of mopped it out with some brake cleaner, carburetor cleaner, and gasoline, kind of a mixture of the three. And uh, now we're going to get into the real part of the project inside the CVT here. I think the first thing we're going to have to do is probably remove the exhaust pipe. It's probably in the way. I may try to avoid doing that, though. I'm going to see if I can get it off without doing that first. So I'll be right back with you guys. I'm uh, going to do my vice grip garage impression right now so uh yeah that's uh, looking pretty good we were able to get in there without taking the exhaust off you know a little little shortcut there i don't know if it really saved me too much because it was actually pretty hard to get it out here but uh, that's okay you know less work is good and i decided to keep it simple here i know i said that this isn't really a detailed video on how to take this apart because uh well there's plenty of videos out there already for the gy6 you really don't need me to go step by step but this is kind of the order I put it on the floor by which uh, each hole that these came out of so uh, that'll keep it nice and simple you know the kiss method keep it simple stupid and uh, I did kind of mar the gasket a little bit there it's uh, kind of destroyed in a couple places but this is really more of a suggestion you know this isn't a fluid transmission it's not closed up or anything so it's really just to keep dirt out and since they already have a 
couple openings anyway. I got like one right there that just goes straight into the transmission and they got another one back here in that area. Uh, and as you can see it's already dirty in there anyway. There's really no point to having a gasket. I think it's really just there to hold tolerances. But uh, anyway, we're in here. And uh, here's the Kickstarter assembly. That always goes sideways when you take it apart. It's a really fun thing to have to get back in the right place. Okay, let's, uh, let's drop that shit. Um, <laughs> no offense, I actually like that guy's channel. He's pretty cool. But uh, here's your CVT belt right here. And here's this variating system I was talking about. So just like I was saying, it starts off small, and as the engine spools up, this will... This will clamp together and the belt will grow out. And uh, on the opposite side here, the opposite effect will happen. The pulleys will release and this will get smaller. Effectively, every time the engine makes a revolution, this will, at the very bottom, be one revolution, one to one. But before that happens, every time the engine makes a revolution here, this will be like a quarter revolution. This will only turn one quarter. So that's kind of how that all works. Pretty simple. Here's your clutch right here. I don't really see anything wrong. I probably didn't even need to open this thing up because it all seems, you know, seems good. Sounds a little crappy, but honestly, it all looks okay. So I don't know, maybe I didn't have to do this. I rolled it back and forward like so. It's still kind of hobbling, you know, hobbling up and down, kind of like how a ferret moves when it gets excited, you know, they jump up and down. Anyway, <laughs> it's hobbling, and um, I don't really see any reason for that. However, while I was messing around here, I did notice something. Um, so you're probably wondering, why was this line so tight? And, you know, that's the thought I had last night. Why was it so tight, right? Like, what the hell's going on? Well, I kind of noticed... I, I can't believe I didn't notice this, but it was so dark last night, I just wasn't thinking about it. But uh, my battery is only being held up by the strap. <laughs> the, the stupid plate that it came with snapped off. It's just sitting there on the bottom of the battery there. That's, that's supposed to be attached. So that explains... Wow, excuse me for this terrible film work. That explains exactly why this line broke. So I gotta find a new place to put the battery because that's just a crappy place, honestly. I mean, with how much rumbling around this cart does and everything, just not the best place. I think I'm gonna locate it to the actual main chassis. Process here of uh, getting the sprocket back where it was before in order to change from this size back to this size, which will basically give us a little less top speed but a little more accelerating power. Um, you have to slide the whole thing over, and while I was doing that, I was uh, using this little bracket here for uh, a handle, which you never want to do that with Chinesium because it just broke. But um, I don't know what the hell that is. It's not really useful, so uh, whatever. That all tightened up now, and uh, I did a little bit of tapping on the clutch here because it seems like it's just not free spinning as much as it's supposed to. And uh, if you push it forward, it's like we're fighting the compression of the engine. See? That's like it's actually stroking. So I wonder if with the ignition on, if this wing would start. <laughs> I wonder if you can push start it now. Um, but anyway, I don't know. Uh, I guess the only real way to fix that would be to take the clutch off. But I really don't feel like doing that right now, because, I mean, it still is working. So I might just go ahead and throw it all back together, ride it around a little bit, um, see if we fix the power problem. I still got to fix the battery plate over there. I got to relocate that. But, uh, yeah, I think we'll just ride it until it yeets itself in there, and then, uh, then we'll deal with it. When we have to replace the clutch, I'll probably put a aftermarket performance clutch in this thing. So... You may have seen, noticed this hole here. This is where your Kickstarter would normally go if you had the scooter. Um, I'm just going to say right now, that is the most insanely hard thing to get aligned up under spring tension while this is in the go-kart. And since we can't use the Kickstarter because it's not the scooter, we're just going to get rid of it. 
that made it a lot easier to slide the cover back on. And since I'll probably have to get inside this case a few times anyway in this thing's life, I just figured it's not worth having. Well, it seems like we got our power band back. So it was indeed the air filter. Didn't even have to clean up the carburetor. But uh, the only problem is it's still kind of doing this number when we're idling here. That is the clutch trying to push the machine forward. So I figure that as time goes by, it will probably get better. Um, because the clutch is only going to get slippier and slippier as it wears out. Wow, that was really bad film for right there. Anyway, the clutch is probably going to slip a little more as it wears in and out over time. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. That's uh, really all there is to say about that.